Remember that cool little feature that Super Mario Odyssey on Switch has, where you can leave the 3D world behind you and jump into a wall or painting, enter in a 2D world and the game mechanics change to match? Well, the Plucky Squire seems to take that idea to the next level by basing their entire game around and building on the unique idea even further. The game wears its inspirations on its sleeve throughout, clearly borrowing from the Legend of Zelda franchise as well. This is not a critique, mind you, and do not assume there is nothing new here for you to enjoy. The game is fun, gorgeous, and filled with charm. What it does? It does exceptionally well game is $44 Australian or 30 USD so America and is available on PC, PS5, Xbox Series S and X and the Nintendo Switch. With all that out of the way let's discuss gameplay first and follow that up with some smexy graphics talk. Okay let's get some story beats out of the way first. So when I discuss gameplay it is not confusing. You are a hero in a storybook and are self-aware of the fact you live in a children's book. Your whole world does and anyone watching who loves meta jokes or self-awareness, this game has it in spades, but not in an annoying way. You run between pages each representing different areas or entirely different worlds. You see the outline of the book and desk you are on at all times. Text will also just exist on the pages, text describing what is happening on that page. The Plucky Squire is two different game types in one. You have your 2D top-down view, which most likely resembles the 2D Legend of Zelda series, and you have full 3D gameplay, more similar to 3D platformers where you run around and collect the shiny things. Focusing on the 2D aspect first, you have exactly what you would expect to have. A trusty sword our hero will use to easily slay all enemies within reach. Three hits normally does the trick and most monsters will be beaten easily. Hits do pack a satisfying punch, as there is a slight pause on contact each time, making each strike feel more weighty and so more satisfying as a result. Just like Zelda, it's worth attacking the grass or bush in the area to get your game currency. You can use this money to unlock more moves and even more money to upgrade them further. This creates a nice incentive early on to make sure you have attacked everything within sight with your trusty sword so you can unlock the cool moves even sooner. You can jump and also do a roll. You get the usual puzzles pop up as well which need to be solved in order to proceed and this is where some delightful little surprises start to pop up. You may recall I mentioned earlier that you can always see the pages of the book and even its text. Well, the text is almighty in this game and if the text says something, it will happen. For example, and I quote, a huge bug sat in the middle of the path is one of those texts and above you is, you guessed it, a huge bug and it's blocking your path. The puzzle here is you can literally pick up the word huge and replace it with other words that are lying about. I won't reveal the answer but sometimes the game accounts for a silly guess and we can all laugh together. I replaced the word full with drained and the end result is hilarious. That same bug looked very tired and drained suddenly. This is not even the solution to the puzzle, as another word is needed, but a fun little example that you can have with words, and these words will have a real impact 
on the world around you. Where the plucky squire really shines and frankly, the reason you likely even clicked on the video is the ability to jump from inside the book's pages slash 2D existence and jump outside into the third dimension. It's an extremely smooth transition as you effortlessly jump in and out of the book's pages to go exploring the 3D world. While this does wonders for variety, as you quickly find yourself jumping from 2D to 3D and back to 2D on the regular, it's how puzzles and the world are designed with these elements in mind that make it all so much fun and part of the puzzle design, which thankfully is not too hard. I suck at puzzles and I tolerate them in games normally as opposed to look forward to them. I'll paint a picture to illustrate how cleverly everything comes together. Let's say you need to get to the other side of a page, but something is blocking your path. You have tried changing the page's text, but nothing seems to grant the desired effect you're after. Well, you might need to literally jump out of the book, run to the other side and re-enter from that side. The ability to jump in and out of the book is not unlimited and whenever you want, but at certain dedicated points. So these are often carefully positioned to assist with puzzles. It almost feels like you're cheating as you jump out of the book, run to where you can't go and re-enter to slip in where you do want to go. Not only that, but the game even lets you take items with you. A 2D block will become fully 3D if you take it, and you can even take words with you. An early ability, so I won't consider this a spoiler, is the ability to flip through the pages of the book. This lets you do more than simply revisit past areas. Sometimes, you will need a word from page 3 for example, as you want to use it in page 6 to completely change things. Personally, I think it is a stroke of genius to be changing text to alter the pages. Jump from 2D to 3D and even take items with you. It all comes together very nicely. It's not just the book you jump in and out of as well. While exploring the 3D world slash bedroom, you can jump into pictures and drawings as well, often acting as shortcuts or bridges to otherwise inaccessible areas. It's wonderful how each mechanic is used so well together all the time. As you progress through the story, you will of course get access to additional weapons and items. I won't spoil anything, but just letting you know it's not just you and your one sword the whole way through. What also is a delight are the many mini games which pop up. They are short, yet unique and rather fun for the short duration of play. I'll use an example of what I know has been shown in the trailers. And that is you fight a bear. A bear that is wearing boxing gloves and plays like the Nintendo classic Punch-Out. All of the mini games, and there are many, play in a different video game style. Fun little creative distractions that I'm sure you would get a kick out of playing. What is funny as well is our character, both in 2D and 3D, is not designed to show off a ripped body underneath or anything. He looks plump, and yet during the mini games, his arms often magically expand to show these muscles. I just find the game logic funny, and I'm here for it. Not everything needs to be so serious all the time. They are not hard, and clearly these mini games are here for your pleasure, so enjoy. Combat in general is fun and not intrusive, but something to enjoy between the exploration and puzzles. Characters are generally likeable in this game, and Moon Wizard is just cool. Dialogue is written well, and feels like you're interacting with different personalities and not scripts. Now, we really need to talk about graphics, art style, and animation. I apologize in advance, because it is time to perv on them smexy graphics. Now, before discussing the graphics part of this video, if you are like me, and believe video games are about escapism and not 
activism, please, please subscribe today to empower voices like mine. I have not forgotten that games are meant to be about having fun and escaping the real world. God bless, and let's continue to the smexy graphics of the Plucky Squire. Now, what stood out to me first with this game, and it's very superficial, but I don't care, it was the graphics. The 2D storybook sections looked great. The animations are super smooth, and when you pop into the 3D world, it looks even better. I love the use of color in this game. The textures and materials of the outside objects often look amazing and even realistic at times. Take a look at this paint set here. The way things shine just look so convincing. I often found myself walking around slowly just to admire the graphics of everyday objects in this bedroom that you live in. Heck, this tube and how it's all so shiny looks really convincing to me. What is icing on the cake here, and I am self-aware enough to know I am a sucker for it, is the subtle use of depth of field. That's the effect where objects out of focus have that blurry effect. I love depth of field. From an artistic direction, I've always felt it makes all games look better. Looking at this pen, you can see from a distance it's blurred, but as you approach, it falls into focus, and now you can see it clearly. So pretty. This is an indie game, but regardless of if you are in the 2D world, if you're in the book, or if you're on the outside with the full 3D graphics, everything looks top notch. This looks like Nintendo Polish in many aspects, and I feel like I am getting the best possible experience. I have not finished this game yet, but average runtime is apparently the 8 hour mark. For its asking price, the smooth gameplay, the puzzles that will challenge but not drive you mad, combined with the gorgeous art style, the Plucky Squire is worth buying today, in my opinion, to support these indie devs who frankly have delivered a more complete game than many modern AAA studios do in recent memory. The trailers looked great, the game looks great, it's bright, it's colourful, it's inviting, it's smooth, the puzzles are satisfying, everything comes together so satisfyingly, and it never feels like it's repeating itself. Combined with the 2D gameplay, with the 3D gameplay, with the mini games that keep popping up, with the different elements and abilities that keep getting introduced, you'll be having a great time from start to finish. That being said, God bless you all, take care, and I'll see you all for the next video.